Hey yo, hey yo, and welcome back to The Letter. We're still playing as Rebecca. And we're about to enter Isabella's apartment to figure out if she's okay. But we all know she isn't, because this is where Isabella found out that Rose, our beloved Rose, was brutally killed. Unalived. I don't know, people... Censorship gets a bit weird sometimes on the internet. <laughs> but, um, here we continue. Isabella, I'm coming in, all right. Without waiting for her answer, I put the door, I pushed the door open and stepped inside. Her unit's still a mess. Instant noodle cops on the table, a pile of clothes on the one side, papers strewn about, and an unkempt bed, among other things. This, this much is a given. Will always be a given. I've been here several times already, and I wonder how she can function like human being with this place in this state. However, there's neither here nor there. I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but it's certainly not finding an empty flat. Granted, she could have left earlier, far earlier than usual. She never ever leaves without making sure she's unplugged everything. That's something she doesn't forget to do. Well, I mean, she's in a probably crazy state of mind right now. <laughs> Doesn't help that her bathroom appears unused this morning. Another habit, and it only means that she hasn't been here since. Last night? Perhaps. Perhaps even since the morning after Miss Cooper's death? Either idea doesn't sit well with me. What with the news we've been hearing lately. The authorities are still trying to find the cause of death for all the victims. Early investigation revealed most of them were employed under Briar Realty Corporation at the time of death. That's suspicious. Meanwhile, BRC has refused to comment on this. Of course. Gathering my wits, I immediately place a call to her mobile. It rings for a good minute, the sound of comfort in itself, but when another minute rolls by without her answering, well, I'm not a woman prone to panicking, sudden bouts of temper maybe, but never panic, despite how I may sound when speaking. And when it ultimately goes straight to her voicemail, I sigh is the only thing I let out. The pause doesn't last long though. In the next moment, my fingers are already moving across the screen in search of the two people who might be able to help. Ashton's number, I find first and dial. Call it a habit, but even Isabella thinks he's dependable when the situation calls for it. Despite how much they give each other grief, that already says a lot about him. There's Zachary, but around this hour he's probably still sleeping. If he feels- if he has freelance work, it's very likely he's just gotten himself to bed. He's the last person I want to bother, if anything. The wait doesn't take long. Soon a click, then Asher's voice echoes through the receiver, still heavy with sleep. He never did grow fond of mornings. Becca? Christ, what time is it? Uh, what's up? <laughs> Not you, apparently. Ha 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 ha. good one. <laughs> No, Ash, hold on. This is important. Becca, stick out. Last night, make this quick. I still got a few hours before the chief bothers me. Sorry, I'll let you go back to sleep after. It's just that. Wait, you were on a stakeout last night? That's not important. Your friend is missing. Did I say that? <laughs> uh, shit. Forget I said that. Forget I said anything. Forget we had this conversation. <laughs> so, you have no idea. Talking or whatever for a second. Belle didn't come home last night. She's gone. <sighs> Isabella. Instead of an answer, a brief pause comes after, followed by something blunt and heavy, hitting a hard surface and a string of rather colorful curses from him. <laughs> that was a weird ah. The moment might have been one of many things I'll keep to myself and remember fondly in the next few days. If things weren't the way they are. When he picks up again, there's no trace of sleep left in his voice. Say that again, from the top. Is 
Isabella's gone, Ash. She didn't come home last night. Her flat's empty. She left her telly running. You know she doesn't do that at... Okay, Becca, stop. Calm down first. You're starting to panic. I'm not! You are. Breathe. One person's not going to simply disappear like that. This is Isabella we're talking about. Yeah, and a lot of her co-workers are being murdered. Or unalived. Do you try calling her? <laughs> what did you think is the first thing I did? I hate when people ask you stupid questions like that. Like, well, did you do this? Well, fucking obviously. Like, like my job is dealing with computers. And, like, we have an IT department that, you know, deals deeper in computers. And, like, they'll come to me and, like, I'll have a problem. And it's like, did you try turning it off and on? I'm like, well, fucking duh. Like, I'm not an idiot. I work with computers. <laughs> like, don't look down on me like that. She's not picking up! It went to her voicemail! How about Zach? Did you check with him? Not yet. I didn't want to bother him. You know he has trouble sleeping and all that. All right, I'll go ask Zach. I'll call you back. No, 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 wait! He ends the call before I can utter a single word of protest. But for the first time since entering this room, tension is gone from my shoulders, and my breathing has eased. The bed creaks as I sink down on it with a sigh. The telly still blares the same uninteresting news, and I'm surrounded by clatter. Uninteresting? <laughs> God. Ugh, her room is disgusting. Like, how can you live with all this food waste? Food waste everywhere! Like, I'll leave my clothes about, which gets them ruined by my dog. But, like, I wouldn't leave, like, food. <laughs> all the same, it feels strangely calm to be here without worrying, nagging at me. I'll have to apologize to Sakri later for sending Ashton his way this early. But for now... Relying on the latter, for this isn't the wrong choice. It never will be. That's something I won't ever doubt in him. M much like his promises. The and true to his word, he calls back only a few minutes after the last one has ended. She's with Zack. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. She could have at least sent a message last night. <laughs> what are you, her mother? It's one thing to hear that from Isabella, but from Ashton... I don't want to hear anything like that from you. <laughs> I'm serious. You've got to stop treating her like she's one of your students, Becca. You don't have to keep tabs on her every time. Last I checked, she's only three years younger than the two of us. That's almost a decade gap from those kids you're teaching, you know. Says the person who keeps calling her Scaredy Cat. I... I... That's... That's not related... At all. Hmm... <laughs> Wait, you? Don't you have a precinct to be at? Whatever happened to not treating her like one of my students? Because if anyone's going to ask me, I think you're doing the same thing. Mm, but he likes her. You have a mixed relationship with Isabella because you care about her. But you also hate that he likes her. Boop. And he's gonna get kissed. He's gonna get kissed. <laughs> He's gonna get kissed. <laughs> Zach said it's an emergency. Something happened last night. Emergency? He didn't put in those exact same words, but it sounded like it. Ash, what really happened? Is Isabella fine? She's alright. She's safe. Zach let her stay the night after she... <sighs> Look, okay. Z-Man wasn't clear about it, but let me handle this. I'll check on her. I'll bring her home. It sounds like a lie, if I ever heard one. The sort where he omits things to, so people won't fret. And I'm not sure whether I should be happy he cares that much to do that. There shouldn't be a need for this between us, is there? We grew up together, didn't we? He knows I'm capable of at least hearing out the truth without it gnawing at me for the rest of the day. He knows me better than that. I know him better than that. Frankly, there's plenty of other things to say about this. But despite, and after all the trouble he went through with how things are moving at the moment, only one thought occurs to me. What should I say? 
I can handle it. Why does he have to go such lengths for a person he only met five years ago? Five years is a long time. My longest relationship was five years. And that was a long time. <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could ask him that. I wish I could simply say to his face and finally get a straight answer from him instead of doing whatever it is we're doing. Instead of beating around the bush, then fucking do it. <laughs> like, yeah, it might make the relationship weird, but at least you'll know. Has the years changed us this much? Has, a, has adulthood changed us this much? And you're too much of an adult. You need to learn to chill. You've done enough, Ash. Let me take it from here. Ashton is quiet for a while, but I can almost see the frown in him. Hear the gears turning in his head. Don't you have a class to teach today? Tuesdays are your busiest this school year, aren't they? Yeah, but someone has to check on her. And, and I don't want to impose on you any further. I've already disturbed your sleep. You're not imposing. Besides, I'm doing you a favor. I know you, Becca. You hate being late or missing a day of work for a very small thing. Leave this to me. You said you're waiting for a call from the chief. I'm dropping by the precinct anyway. There's some trouble I have to fix with those guys. It won't be completely out of the way. Ashton, I... I trail off, a loss for words in the end. From the start, it's a losing battle. We may have been together for a long time, known each other far better than other people, but that doesn't mean we often see things eye to eye. Time and again, it's a matter of agreeing to disagree. This is oft how the status quo is kept. Whenever it comes to this, I can only accept it begrudgingly. <sighs> okay, whatever you want to do. I'll let you know what happened afterwards, I promise. I'll call you later. You have a good day. Bye. I admit the way he puts it isn't comforting enough. He can be blunt like that. So many unknown variables, so many words left unsaid. I wish he'd simply lay them all out in the open. Because like this, I'm more inclined to think he's... There's an exaggeration on the other's part. If it's from Zachary or Ashton, I don't know. In the end, all I can do is wait. Go about my day and hope for the best. Before leaving, I spare Isabella's room one last glance. Dis disturbingly quiet, now without her in it. I'll get answers from her later. For now, my concerns are best left here. Did you turn off the TV, at least? <laughs> like, no, make her pay for the electricity. The rest of the day slips away in a blur. Despite my best efforts in keeping this morning events from surfacing in my mind, it sticks. In a way, everything today simply feels like a reminder. Every conversation, regardless how casual, every topic, no matter how mundane it seems. I blame the news entirely for this. Recent happenings brought quite a few interesting stories to everyone's attention. Mostly superstitious talk of death. And when locals talk about death here, anyone can sure as hell count on someone bringing up that mansion Isabel sold a few weeks ago. Even my own students won't stop yapping about it. I think it's even worse than when it was put back up in the market. Now, there are more stories. If this is the world reminding me of what matters or simply because the atmosphere around this time of the year calls for it, I'd rather take the latter. At least then, I can be sure people will forget about it in favor of another set of holidays after. Nevertheless, and this may be a painful thing to admit, but listening to them is a pleasant distraction while waiting for Ashton's call. I hope he didn't forget. The school day's about to end soon. No, that's got nothing with what I heard. Oh? You always hear stuff. I'm not sure if half of them's even real. What are these voices? <laughs> that's not what I heard. <laughs> no, really. Rowan knows about it. He used to be in the same class with them. I can hear you from back here, you know. Are we going to see what Rowan looks like? Whatever, Rowan. Anyway, the story goes like this. There were three of them. They entered the mansion on a dare, and they were all never seen again. Oh. No one knows what happened to them up to this day. Scary shit, man. <laughs> Cock and bull story. 
calling it now. Cock and ball. <laughs> no, you don't get it. Why don't you ask Miss Gales then? Better yet, why don't you go inside the place? I'm betting my allowance you can't do it. It's owned now, it would be trespassing. Their talk immediately halts when I look up, all of them suddenly pretending to be engrossed in their current activity. Still, a word to put a stopper on this nonsense is needed. Creativity and imagination fostered by these stories is one thing, but reckless ideas should be corrected before anything potentially tragic comes from it. Back to your worksheets, everyone! And I don't want to hear any talk of dares or going inside that mansion. It's private property now. Exactly. You'd all better stay away from it before. Hello? At that noise, the whole lot of them go silent. You can almost hear a pin drop. The look on their faces would have made a funny picture, but that's irrelevant at the moment. If that's... If that is a student loitering around, someone's going to be in trouble. I'll be back. If you're done, you can leave your worksheets on my desk. Keep the noise to a minimum while I'm gone, okay? I can sense their eyes on me as I walk out the door. A muted kind of anticipation. A bit unnerving, but it's far more agreeable than the feeling of being watched I've been enduring these past few days. Class is still in session for most of the rooms. In a few hours, once the final bell rings, however, this place will once again be filled with busy chatter and footfalls, an everyday cycle in itself. But for the moment, I let the silence guide me. My ears focus on whatever sound there are, or there will be, searching for that distinct clanging of metal. A good minute passes for the portion of it. Only my footsteps echoes through the halls. And another. I'm about to turn around when the sound, the sound of it halts my footsteps. It's a little muffled and infrequent, but grows louder after each interval. With the hallway devoid of people, if I don't put a stop to it soon, it'll start to disturb the other classes still going on. Looking for it doesn't take long. All I do is follow the rackets, and shortly I'm standing in front of a nondescript row of unoccupied lockers. From inside, from inside one of them, sitting in the middle, comes the noise, annoyingly disruptive now that I'm facing it. Like someone pounding on the metal door from inside, hoping to get out. Maybe it's a cat. Leaning forward, I try to get a glimpse through the hor horizontal slats of whatever's causing it. But in this light, only darkness greets me in the other round of clanging. Do you have a phone with a flashlight on it? Louder than previous one. More desperate. I've heard stories before from other schools. From a few f colleagues who had to deal with it once or twice. Although personally, I've never encountered one myself. And I can only thank the heavens I haven't yet. But... If this is another kid, some other student stuffed in the locker. With a huff, I straighten up and study it briefly with a frown. Without delay, I reach for its handle and... At once it stops, immediately replaced by the muffled sound of a mobile ringing. I give the door a few raps before taking my attention away. A second, another, when nothing or no one responds, I finally avert my eyes and pull out my mobile. Ashton's voice greets me from the other end of the line, oddly cheerful in light of its morning matters. Or maybe because I'm just expecting some grave or serious news from him. Instead, I get this. Hey, Becca. Hi. Well, you sound happy. I do? My voice still sounds the same to me. That's because you got a kiss. You got a little kiss. Choo -choo. <laughs> you got a kiss. There are only two things I know of that could be the reason for his tone. Sweets, or he's gotten a good lead in his case. But now there's a third thing. From the sound of it, I'm going to assume it's the former, since lately that case is all that's running inside his head. If there's ever a third one, I've never heard of it yet. Pesos. Besita. <laughs> 
it can only be one of the two, right? Ignore that. How's Isabella? Got her home a few minutes ago. I think she's sleeping now. Sorry this took a while. Z-Man gave us the puppy eyes after we tried to leave. Had some food prepared for us, apparently. We didn't have the heart to say no. That's all right. Is she okay now? I... I'm not really sure. She didn't say anything to Zack, but she mentioned a plan to take a few days off from work. It was a passing comment before I left her, so I didn't get to ask. Must be because of Rose's death. Could be. It doesn't seem like it from Zack's story, though. He said she was shaking when she got there. Shaking? The word triggers a memory. From three days ago, on the way home, from her little treat. After she sold the mansion. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I won't lie, it scared me. The terrified look of her face. How she sounded when she suddenly screamed. Becca? Still there? Yeah, I... I just remembered something. Uh, sorry, don't mind me. Share the information! Share your information with each other so that you know, so you all have the same information. You can put pieces together and be like, oh, something's amiss. Look, if you can talk to her, get the story out of her. That would be great. She wouldn't talk to Zack or me even when I tried. Maybe she'll speak up if it's you. I'll give it a go, but I can't promise anything, okay? You know how stubborn she can get. And you also shut her down because you're a shitty, shitty friend. <laughs> but thanks for letting me know about this. No problem. If anything comes up, just drop me a line, okay? There's a short pause before he cuts the call from his end. Once again, I'm alone with my thoughts. But rather than answers, all I got from it are questions. More of them. One on top of the other, as if the world isn't planning to give me a break anytime soon. But that's a problem I'll tackle later. That's future Becca's problem. Right now, I've got students who need to be taught follies of eavesdropping. If the slightest open door and their smothered laughter from inside is an indication. All right, enough eavesdropping. All of you, back to your seats. Is that your boyfriend, Miss Gales? Is that your boyfriend? I think that's the same voice as um, Kylie. None of your business! He totally is. <laughs> what is this nasally? He totally is. He's your boyfriend. You you wish he was your boyfriend, but he's too busy kissing Isabella. A quick scuffle follows that comment. If there's a retort prepared at the tip of my tongue, I, I drop every pretense of letting it loose on them. There's no use... Arguing with teenagers sometimes, boisterous as they all are. They're still my kids, though. Rough around the edges, maybe, but still my kids. Shaking my head, I head back to my classroom with a smile. But not before taking a glance at the locker again. It hasn't made a sound since. Oh, must be the wind. Or they passed out. So without another look, I leave it alone. Okay, that's probably the lamest scare that we've gotten. <laughs> all in all, the entire school day ends without a hitch. It could have gone better, mind you. But with the exams nearing, getting out of work before the sun has set looks as though it's a far dream for now. At least until they're over. Then we have the holiday to look forward to. There really are times when you simply take what you can get for the time being. Nothing wrong with that. All I'm hoping for is this will continue until, until the whole day ends. There's still that promise I made to Ashton, and frankly the idea alone doesn't sound good. If Isabella didn't talk to them, what makes them think she'll talk to me? It's not like there's a hierarchy, is there? Well, she won't because you shot her down when she tried to talk to you! Just because I can handle Isabella's childish tendencies doesn't mean I can do it all the time. Really? Those two give me too much credit. No. Nevertheless, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. If only because I'm also worried about her. And both Zachary and Ashton deem it important that somebody get the story out of her. Here's to hoping it's got nothing to do with the letter. Again. Oh, but it does! 
I understand if she feels a bit stressed lately, but keeping that story going on for more than a week is... <sighs> it's bound to get tiring at one point. Well, obviously, if she's still talking about it, there's, there's something to it. <laughs> Seriously, I merely don't want this to end in another argument. Well, that argument was your fault. God willing, the cafe special will help smoothing things out. After all, it's always been food with her. Or money. But mostly food. <laughs> At this hour, the cafe is unusually filled to the brim with people. That's the reason Isabella and I rarely go here during the evenings. It's simply too much of a hassle when we can prepare food ourselves in the comfort of our homes. And there really isn't much reason to eat out lately. What with life going on, a busy streak. No time for long lines, better spend that doing something productive, yes? Lucky there isn't one tonight. I forgot about you, you weird mouse cat. Rabbit. Demon? Only a few people are idling around the counter. Four of them, in fact, a woman in her 60s and a teenager busy with his phone. Both are just waiting to be served their orders. Ah! You... Your proportions are weird <laughs> compared to... They should have made her smaller because this looks weird. The other two, a posh looking man and a child who I immediately recognize as Kylie, appear to have not yet picked anything they want. For some reason, my stare lingers at the guy. Though dressed relatively well and looks harmless, I haven't seen him around these parts before. Someone new in the neighborhood, perhaps? Even so, there's something familiar in him. Feels like I've seen him somewhere before. The bad juju aura. Also, that begs the question of why Kylie's with him. Of course, the girl easily takes a liking to anyone who buys her sweets, so it's both a bit worrisome and unsurprising. Ah, Jesus cupcake. And Snorlax. <laughs> the blonde bloke doesn't look particularly thrilled with the company, though. I turn my eyes away from them enough once a guy at the counter appears, ready to take my order. That, and I also hate to be accused of ogling a stranger. Two, evening special, take out. He's already punching the order before I finish saying my order out loud. It's more for formality's sake, made out of habit. He has known Isabel and I long enough that if we ever drop by here, he already knows we all. It's always because I'm buying dinner for the two of us. I rarely visit here alone, if I can help it, but Isabella can sometimes be a bad influence. He gives me a small smile before leaving my... Before leaving to prepare my order, while I fish for my wallet when... Look, you little ankle biter. If I buy you the biggest parfait they have, will you please, please behave? I would just like five. No. Ten minutes of peace and quiet. You said you'll get me some bread pudding this time. Yeah, well, darling, they said they ran out of it. Just pick another one so we can be on our way. Their parfait doesn't look as cute as the one Mama bought me. Mama. Parfait is just ice cream, sweetheart. It'll melt no matter how dainty it appears. In the end, it'll all look like an ugly puddle. Now, come on, just pick one. It could even be the most expensive one on that list. I don't give a shit. Why? Care, I don't care. Now, what I would give for someone to buy you off my hands right now. You're not gonna do well with the kid. <laughs> what? My whole attention instantly snaps back to them and their conversation. Jumping to conclusions isn't something I'm particularly fond of, especially when all I have are baseless assumptions, but you can't really trust a stranger these days. No one around the cafe seems to have noticed his words, either. Very suspicious words. Still, I don't move. Yet. But my hand has already shifted from my wallet to the book I'm carrying. Oh, is this the library thing? A hardbound textbook. Looks harmless, but if a situation calls for it, it might be a good deadly weapon. Might. I haven't gotten a chance to try it anywhere so far. Today could be the day. Kylie, stop being a brat. Look, if you don't want a parfait, how about... How about a Bonifee pie? 
I'm sure it'll taste just as good as any other bread pudding. I'll even buy you the entire tray. How does that sound? That's not what you said before. Well, sweetheart, adults change their minds sometimes. You said if I come with you, you'll buy me a bread pudding, and I did, and now you won't keep your promise. I want to go home. I miss my mom. No, darling, if I remember correctly, and I have a good memory, honey. What I said was, if you come quietly with me, I might buy you one. The quiet part didn't happen. Though, now that I'm sober, I think this is a bad idea. I should just ship you someplace else for that peace and quiet. Oh, that's it. No hesitation. In a few paces, I'm within my reach, and without warning, I'm slamming the flat area of a book against his skull. Ow! There's a cry of pain, followed by him instantly crouching down, hands nursing the sore spot. Almost comically, as if it were a different situation, and the safety of St. Goretti's student isn't at stake, I'd probably feel sorry for him. I mean, has anyone seen how thick this book is? Get behind me, Kylie! <gasps> Miss Pink! It's amusing how fast her expressions changes from the pouty one earlier to something of utter delight upon seeing me. But there's no time for pleasantries, not even quick ones, because soon the man straightens and I'm readying my favorite newfound weapon for another hit. Except this time, he's ready, and before I can land another one, his hand shoots up and catches my wrist in a firm hold. <laughs> and the look on his face. Bloody hell, woman! What's your problem? To say he's pissed would be a complete understatement. I had been the weak-willed sort, I'd probably cower under his sharp gaze. But that simply isn't how I roll. If he thinks he can scare me and do as he pleases here, just because I'm a woman, or whatever his reasons may be, he's got another thing coming for him. So instead, I return it to him with the same intensity, with the same venom. What's my problem? <laughs> You're the one who has a problem here! You can't go striking people. You should have said some. Talk to Kylie first. Rotten bow bags <laughs> like you don't deserve the freedom to run this town! What are you doing to this girl? And why is that any of your business, pray tell? Oh, it's my business if I make it to be. Now, release me or I'll call the police. You're the one who assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> you think that scares me, Daisy? I have a name, you sleazy douchebag. Oh, I'm sure. His grip on my hand only tightens when I attempt to shake it off. His tone may be dripping with anger and sarcasm, but the gleam in his eyes says it all. He's getting a kick out of this. Riling people up, getting on their nerves, invading their personal space. He knows exactly what and which buttons to push. The nerve of this person. You struck him! Yeah, you, you thought, you know, he might be like a kidnapper. But you should have approached it differently. <laughs> the nerve of this arsehole. If he thinks I'm going to give in to his goading, please, he might as well just kiss his sorry behind. In fact, why not do the most sensible thing right now? Teach him a tough lesson. Hit him in the dick! Mister, you have until the count of five to let me go and step out of my personal space. She's giving you a warning. A fair warning. Fairer than any I can offer for people of his kind, and I'm already being considerate. Hell, this arsehole doesn't even deserve a warning. If he doesn't listen, well, he's as much responsible for what will happen next as anyone. Or else what? Such vulgar words coming out of that pretty mouth. A gorgeous flower like you shouldn't even be saying. Don't say I didn't warn you, Bobag. Hmm? Mmm, love of that intensity, Daisy. Oh. FYI, I like feisty in a woman. It gives them this certain charm. Why don't you? Five. A second of silence. Then without any preamble, my leg moves in one fluid motion and delivers a swift, powerful, well-placed kick to his nether regions. <laughs> Needless to say, the effect is instantaneous. 
He yelps abruptly, drops his hold on me, and kneels over, howling from the pain. I can see tears forming at the corners of his eyes, too, though the mere sight of it prompts not an ounce of remorse from me. Or from me! I would have been gentler if he isn't such a dirty little prick with an ego too big for his head. Too bad. Whether it... Whether this obliterates any chance of him ever procreating remains to be known. Oh no, he's got babies on the way. But a part of me is already praying he doesn't ever breed after this. Too late. We have no need for more of him in this world. You... You <laughs> mad woman! I warned you, you ass! Why you... This is harassment, I'm telling you! Harassment! She did hit first. Then why don't you tell that to the police once they get here, hmm? You despicable! Whatever you're assuming I am, I'll have you know it's all in your head. None of it's true. You best have that pretty brain of yours checked before that gets worse. What is wrong with you? Is this the face of someone who'd do anything suspicious? Yes. Oh? You don't think a stranger luring an innocent child with promises of sweets before whisking them away from their parents doesn't warrant any suspicion? You have a very funny definition of suspicious, asshole. Maybe you're the one who should have that head of yours checked. The kid asked me to buy her sweets. You're the one who's suspicious here. I'll have you know, I have a wife. Okay. <laughs> that much, at least, appears to have a sliver of truth to it. He even makes a show of brandishing his left hand to my face with much flourish. Sure enough, a wedding ring is there, though all that earned him is an unimpressed glare from me. Immediately, a small part of me starts to feel sorry for whoever, whatever, poor woman married this sod. I don't understand why he has to bring her up, either. As if the mention of her alone will magically present a solution to his problem. Alright, this got really interesting all of a sudden. And I got to kick him in the dick! <laughs> but um, I am out of time. I'm well over my time again. But um... <laughs> oh, Rebecca! Your chapter's pretty interesting. It's getting pretty spicy. But um... Thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe, ring the bell, so you know when I post, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!